Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making Alpine Blossom Cheese. So Alpine Blossom is a variation on a, it's a Swiss cheese. I have seen them for sale in shops, not personally, but online. And, and it basically is a Swiss style cheese um, I'm using a, a Gruyere recipe for this one with some variations to that and you'll see that uh, as we go through the video. And it's got some flowers and herbs pressed into the rind uh, but stuck on basically with some honey, some raw honey. Um, now the cheese is fully mature uh, before I put the flowers on. So there is a four month period where you'll need to mature the cheese first before you add the botanicals and herbs uh, onto the outside. Anyway, let me show you how I made Alpine Blossom Cheese. So don't forget to sanitize your equipment. And I am using milk by Inglenook Dairy, pasteurized and unhomogenized. So the ingredients for Alpine Blossom are 9.7 liters, or 10.25 quarts of unhomogenized cow's milk with a fat of about 3.8%, 300 milliliters or 10 fluid ounces of pure cream at 35% fat, one eighth of a teaspoon of thermophilic culture. I'm using MOT 92, or you can use a quarter of a teaspoon of Thermo B, one sixteenth of a teaspoon of Propionic Shimani, one sixty fourth of a teaspoon of Sacco LPRA, or Danisco Holback LC, one half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of single strength rennet, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride, both have been diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. Finally, you'll need 18% saturated brine solution. So don't forget to whisk in the cream into the milk so I'll do this for about a minute or so. And then start to heat your milk up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. So I heat it up initially on the stove and then transfer it over to my water bath where I've got a immersion uh, heater. And I'm just taking a little bit of the water out because it kind of overflowed from displacement from the pot. And I've got that set at 33, which is about one degree over the target temperature of 32. So I'm just checking it. Yep, 32, fairly spot on there, which is good. So we're ready to go. Now add all of the cultures. There are quite a few in this mix. So first the thermophilic starter culture, sprinkle that over the surface, and then the propionic shimani, which uh, will add a nutty flavour to the cheese, and then the protective culture, the LPRA, or the whole back LC, and that prevents the um, that prevents eyes from occurring in the cheese. Well, that's what I hope it does anyway. Then cover it up and we're going to allow the cultures to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, we stir the cultures back into the milk. Then we're going to allow that to ripen for 10 minutes. So it's a fairly low acidic acidity cheese. So there is, has some um, cream has floated to the top and it's kind of like cultured, but I've just left it for the moment. But just stirring that back in, all the cream back in again. Now we're going to add the calcium chloride and this adds back soluble calcium into pasteurized milk. 
and allows for a much better curd set. Here I'm skimming the uh, what's probably like cultured butter now sitting on top. So now we add the rennet and we stir that for no more than one minute. So cover that and allow it to set for 40 minutes. So now we're going to check for a clean break. Now my initial clean break was not clean at all, it's fairly sloppy. So I chose to wait for another 10 minutes and this is a good practice. If you think it's not very clean then wait for another 10 minutes, put the lid on uh, and wait for it to firm up. So then check for a clean break again. And that looks much, much better. So I'm going to cut the curds into pea-sized pieces. So initially I'm just using my curd cutter there to cut into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. And then I'm using a balloon whisk to cut them much smaller. Just a stabbing up and down motion. And I find this gets the curds to the right size. Now we're going to allow those to heal for another five minutes. And you can see a bit of whey floating on top, that's fine. So just a, a gentle initial stir. And then we're going to stir the curds for 60 minutes whilst increasing the temperature to 46 degrees Celsius or 114 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm turning up my precision cooker there to 46. Now there will be a time delay for the heating which is good. It took about 45 minutes to get back up to that target temperature. Um, so stirring for the whole hour and you'll find that the curds shrink quite a bit. So continue stirring for that 60 minutes. So after the hour's finished, the curd should be the size of a plump rice grain. And to check whether it's done, just make sure the temperature's certainly at 46. Mine's just a little bit below, but that's fine. And with clean hands, just grab a handful of curds, give them a squeeze. And if they stay together, and you can then press them apart with your thumb easily, then they're cooked. They're ready to be pressed. So pop the lid on and allow the curds to settle for five minutes. This just makes it easier to drain them in a minute. So once they've settled down to the bottom, just move that aside, pull your uh, precision cooker out, drain the water off, and get ready for the draining. So I've got a sanitised colander and basket there, and I've placed the basket inside the colander, and I've lined it with a loose weave cheesecloth. This just makes things uh, a lot easier and it's a bit of a trick to um, not have to handle the curds very much. So we're going to drain the curds through the cheesecloth. Now you can reserve the whey if you want to, uh, if you want to make something else with the whey. So once you've got all the curds in there, just level them out a little bit. If you need to pull the cloth to make sure that it's not bunching up, you can do that at this stage as well. So just fold the cloth over and top with a follower and then press at 11 kilograms or 24 pounds for one hour. So with my spring press I just estimate it with a half closure of the, pre the spring. It's a spring is rated for 50 pounds. So 
So the way should be running clear. If the way is cloudy, then you're actually pressing too hard. So you can see it's nice and clear as it runs off there. So I'm just spraying my hands with white vinegar there before I touch the cheese. Kills any molds or yeast that may be lurking on my hands. So I remove the cheese from the press. And just be gentle with this initial pressing because it is fairly firm, but just be gentle. It might stick to the cloth. If it does, then just pull it away very gently because this is a high temperature cheese. I'm just molding it back into shape there. It had a little bit of a lip on it. So cover the curds with the cloth and the follower and repress at 22.5 kilograms or 50 pounds for 18 hours. So 18 hours later, which is the next day for me, I'm gonna remove the cheese from the press. And it has formed very well, the rind is totally closed. Now the brine was a little bit full, so I took a cup out so it wouldn't overflow when I popped the cheese in. So the cheese looks very good. The rind is fully closed, as I mentioned. And it's ready to brine in the 18% brine solution. So I'm gonna brine the cheese for 10 hours. I'm gonna flip that halfway through at the five hour mark. Now, if you can't get your cheese fully submerged, just sprinkle a layer of salt on the top, the surface that's, that is exposed, uh, and you should be right to go. And then when you flip it over again, then just sprinkle salt on the other exposed surface. So we're gonna brine for, as I mentioned, 10 hours. So after the 10 hours, just remove the cheese from the brine. I'm gonna place that on a, a bamboo mat there, just a draining mat. And we're going to air dry the cheese, uh, just cover it with an umbrella, food umbrella. Air dry it for about two to four days until it's touch dry. I just turn that twice daily, just to make sure it gets even drying. Once it's touch dry, we're going to uh, get a sanitized ripening box and place a damp cloth under the mat to increase the humidity in the box. And we're going to transfer the cheese into the ripening box. So we're going to mature it in the ripening box at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit at 85 to 90% relative humidity for just two weeks. I'm going to turn that every second day. This is just to create a bit of a natural rind on the outside. Now, if you find that it gets some mold on the outside, just use a bit of brine and wipe that off. And it will continue to develop the rind. Remembering this is only for two weeks, it's no big deal. Then pop it back in the ripening box. So after the two weeks, clean off the rind if you need to, and then vacuum pack the cheese. So then we're gonna mature it at 13 degrees Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit in the cheese fridge for a total of four months and turn it every week to ensure ripening. So the blossom mix, you will need two tablespoons of dried red rose petals, two tablespoons of dry calendula or marigold petals, two tablespoons of dried lavender buds, two tablespoons of dried blue cornflower petals, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of dried marjoram, one teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of dried parsley, and one teaspoon of dried onion flakes. You'll also need some honey at room temperature that is quite fluid, and we're going to be using that for the glue to stick the blossom mix onto the cheese. Anyway, back to Gav. So the cheese is now mature. Uh, so it was ready for um, putting the flowers on uh, after four months of aging. So I've aged it for the four months. I've got my blossom mix here. Now the blossom mix, I'll just read out what's in it. 
we have got uh, dried rose petals, calendula flowers, lavender buds, blue cornflower petals, uh, some dried thyme, some dried marjoram, uh, some dried oregano, uh, dried parsley, and some a little tiny bit of dried onion flakes. So that's what's in the mix. I don't really know what's in our Alpine, Alpine Blossom mix, but looking at photos of uh, commercially made versions of this, um, I've come up with my own flower mix. Now, to get it to stick onto the cheese, um, I've got some honey, uh, and this honey was kindly donated to me by uh, Heidi and Jeff, who you've seen the video of. Uh, who Jeff proposed to Heidi, and now they're engaged. So she's we've got some lovely runny, fresh, raw honey here. Um, and I'm going to use a pastry brush, and I'm going to coat the cheese with that. So one side first to get it to stick on, uh, and then I'll do the rest. It may be a bit sticky, so I might have to get some gloves. So I'll go and do that now. So let's cut into the cheese, uh, not cut into the cheese, sorry, I cut the bag open. So this cheese, as you probably already know, is a variation on Gruyere, well, my Gruyere recipe, that's in Keep Calm and Make More Cheese, uh, my second book. Now not a lot of moisture because I put this in a ripening box and wiped it with brine for about two weeks. Uh, and it's got no mold on the outside, which is fantastic. A Little bit of funny um, uh, pattern on the outside, but you won't see that in a minute anyway. So what I'm hoping to do is do one side with the honey, very lightly, and then put it in the blossoms. And I'm expecting that the, the, the botanical mix is gonna be and, and herb mix is gonna go everywhere. So I think this is gonna be a fairly messy job. Anyway, let's go, but it smells lovely, it really does. All right. So this is just a natural bristle pastry brush. One of the natural bristles is, um, there we go, other doggos will enjoy that. Nice honey brush, get off. Right, so just a very light coating. I don't want to make this too crazy or too sticky. I want it just enough stickiness so that the, um, the flowers will stick to it and herbs, of course. So make sure that you haven't the honey's not candied, which uh, would happen if the honey's fairly old. This is very young honey, if that makes sense. Right, so we've got a edible sick, sticky surface. Nice. Put the honey over there and the brush out the way at the moment. So, see what happens, eh? See, see if my crazy idea will work. So I'm just pushing that into the blossom mix. Oh, that's not too bad. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Nice. All right, I'll just sprinkle some of the herbs on that didn't quite make it. Got a lot of flower petals on there, but. This is gonna look quite good. All right. Shake the sprinkles off. Right, so this is where it's gonna get messy on one side. Right, so flowers are going to come off as I'm going to do the um, I'm going to do the outside, the the rim of the wheel. So 
So, so far so good. The honey seems to be working all right. Now I'm getting flowers in my honey. Stop it. Getting flowers everywhere actually. But that's okay. They are falling off. So what the plan is, once uh, once I've got these, the blossom or the herb mix, whatever you want to call it, blossom, we'll call it blossom mix, shall we? Um, once that's all on there, then I'm going to vacuum pack it for a couple of days. I think there might be some flavour that will infuse into the cheese. I don't think there'll be much. Right. And, uh, and then we'll do a taste test. So, there we go. So it looks like the blossom mix that I made um, is enough so far. Let's put that back on there again. I guess some of it's falling off. Yeah, we've got a nice coating, so that's good. And I will put some more on it as I vacuum pack it, so let's, let's turn it on to get off. It's trying to stick already. Right, bit of a sticky mess, but that's okay. Cheese making is <laughs> Always fun. There we go. And flip it over. Ugh. There we go. <laughs> Flowers everywhere. Very flowery cheese, isn't it? Let's have a look. Oh, I don't need some in the middle. That didn't quite work. Maybe it's the plate shape. Right, stick on. So the honey's drying out, the herbs are absorbing the honey and look, I think we've got a fairly good coating there. So what I'll do now is uh, vacuum pack the cheese and uh, we'll see how we go and we'll come back to it. Right, yeah. So we're going to see. Now I'm going to go do a generous cut uh, on the bag. So, got a good coverage, I think. The sides, maybe not so much because it keeps falling off. But certainly the top and bottom look pretty cool. I'm going to put a fair bit on there. Because as we backpack, it's going to seal, I would hope. There we go. There flowers everywhere. Right, make sure there's none in the seal itself. Rightio, uh, so I've got it on dry and I'll do gentle and we'll seal it up. Right, so that sucked a lot of the air out. Well, it's supposed to, it's a vacuum packing machine. And um, yeah, let's just check the seal. Yeah, not bad, we'll do another one.
Oh yeah, so that looks pretty good. So we've got a lot of um, the, a lot of colour on the cheese, uh, and a lot of colour on that side where I put extra. So that's really good. Um, and yeah, so we'll just let that go for a week. The sides probably not so much. A lot fell off, but a lot of the herbs stuck on there, and some flowers. So I'm hoping by doing the vac vacuum packing, it um, it basically uh, will press the flowers into the cheese, which is, is what I'm aiming for here. So what we'll do, we'll come back in a couple of weeks uh, for the taste test video and we'll see what it tastes like. I'm hoping it tastes like Gruyere with a hint of um, nice herby and floral notes and, and maybe a little bit from the honey, but probably not too much. I don't expect that the flowers and the herbs are going to integrate too much into the cheese. Um, I think it's more because it looks nice. <laughs> and it is quite spectacular as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, like I said, join me in about two weeks time uh, for the taste test. Well, thanks for watching Curd Nerds. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It all helps the algorithm. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed and you want to see the taste test, then don't forget to hit that little bell and select all notifications and you'll get an email from the YouTubes and they'll tell you when the next video comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.